Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Retro Gamers Podcast, episode number 224. Larry here. And Anthony here. And what's going on, as always? How are you? Oh, you know, and you know what a loaded question that is, so why do you keep asking me? Because one day you're going to slip up and tell us. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I'm in Florida, everybody. Fair I'm enough. I'm in Florida. It's hot. <laughs> it is. It's actually it's hitting the 80s now. Oof. Ugh, Already. Ah. Humidity? March. Uh, not so much yet. Oh, all right, that's good. But I did, but I, but I did go for an early morning run when oh. it was only like fifty-five out, which is nice. Not bad. Not bad. No, no, it was actually very nice, and uh, I can still walk. So uh, <laughs> there, there, there's a bonus there. Any, any exercise you can walk away from. This um, is that's how I live. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, yesterday <laughs> how are you? up here on Long Island. Yesterday felt like spring. It was great. Mm-hmm. I had the windows open for the first time this year to let the air in, and it was a nice breeze. Figured, you know what? It's going to be warm for a while. I woke up. God, it was so cold in here. I'm like, let me close all the windows and jack the heat up. There you go. It's that, you know, there's that weird time of year when the weather is kind of like that. Like, I've gotten used to this type of weather because in L.A. it was it was always like a 25 degree difference between mm-hmm. day and night. So I was always like, it's cold at night. It's it's really hot in the day. Um, so just par for the course all right and there's your uh there's your weather forecast folks for the retro gamers podcast there you go there there is your retro weather <laughs> since this, since this drops on tuesday and i'm giving you saturday's weather yes as a blizzard rolls in everywhere <laughs> so uh but we got some cool stuff to talk about this week we do. Uh, i figured why not what the heck let's just get right into it um, as we should one thing i just want to mention just super quick um you know Last week, I talked about all the Kickstarter campaigns um, yep. that I'm in. Uh, and you made me buy one. Yes, and it, and it went. So we got charged. It did. Yes, we did. We, we definitely got charged. I, am, I now own a book that will be out in like three years. <laughs> Just about. I think it's due next year. Yes. Yeah. Um, and on top of that, forget about all the pre-orders that I have from Strictly Limited Games uh, that are uh, westernizing a lot of these uh, Japanese exclusive games, like the, some of the Darius collections, Cotton. Um, I forgot there was another game that there was. Um, and I'm waiting for those. Lord knows when those are going to ship. Oh, the Space Invaders game. Mm-hmm. Um, so all those I'm waiting on. Uh, there's another website. They kind of work together. Uh, Retrobit and Castlemania Games. Castlemania. Castlemania games. Okay. This is what they call themselves. Great companies. Fantastic companies. Um, like just recently, I pre ordered a game called Undercover Cop, which was a Japanese beat em up uh, akin to Final Fight that's coming over to the Western market for the first time ever. Uh, mm-hmm. Super Nintendo cart. Very cool. Um, but I also pre ordered a few months ago, and of all my pre orders, finally I got a shipping confirmation on something. Oh, finally. And what was that? For so long, I've been waiting for this. I've talked about it here. I finally got a shipping confirmation. Wait, wait, wait. It must be the Polymega. No, I need the Polymega, though, in order to be able to play with this pre-order that shipping. Oh, good Lord. <laughs> My uh, Toe Plan collection has shipped. Uh, it is a, um, uh, it's a set of four shoot-em-ups. Uh, mm-hmm. Truxton, Hellfire, Fire Shark, and Zero Wing. Uh, you know, all our base belong to us. Yes. Um, or to you. I always forget the full lines. But us, um I believe. Yeah, but um that is finally shipping. Four Genesis cartridges that granted I do have a regular Genesis. I have a Genesis clone system. I have I just one. Wanna... Can you see it? No, you can't see it in behind me. Eh, probably. It's in there somewhere. No, it's oh uh, well the JDC XI is next to the NES. That works on the top there. There it is. Have you even turned that on? I have. It works great. Okay, good. I uh, turned it on and played. Um, what did I play on it? Really? Like I, th- I think I threw in Sewer Shark really quickly just to see how it worked. Niner, Niner. Um, so this Toe Plan collection is shipping. Uh, I should get it actually Monday, and I'm actually excited. I bought the collector's edition, so mm-hmm. very excited. I'll show it off uh, the following week and everything like that. So cool. um, yeah. So Poly Mega, get off your ass. And start shipping, please. Well, they are shipping. You, you just not shipping to you right now. No, I think again, just I think they're having issues with with one of the other distributors in like Malaysia yeah. or something like that. I think that's the oh, issue. those Malaysians. So, 
that's look they they're good to go in in the in with the with China but Malaysia having some problems so okay. i think there's a revolution happening over there and i'm not even joking no some, no no there's I, some I sort of uprising there, yeah there is something going on there yeah. so i guess polymega takes the back so seat. if if you're listening in Malaysia and you're part of the uprising can you just move away from the factory that's dealing with the polymega i just want this system once it ships you can go back and set fire to whatever you want yeah priorities so, people honestly we so. need our consoles. But, um, but I am looking forward to this. It's going to be pretty cool. And again, I'll show it off next week. We're going to uh, burn in hell for that. Well, I, I'm good. You're, the, you're on your way. I'm driving the bus. So uh, That's true. As long as, my, <laughs> as long as my hell is like 8 or 16 bit. That's all I ask. <laughs> like, I want to be surrounded by that kind of fire. <laughs> What was the meme going around of this is what lava sounds like? Oh yeah, <laughs> it, was, it was level. The stage it was force. it was a, an actual yeah. eruption, and they were playing the the Mario music. Yeah, oh my god. So I got that coming in, and there's actually one other thing I purchased recently. Um, nothing. This is nothing major. Don't get me wrong, folks. I'm not. I'm not going to uh, blow your stacks for this thing. Mm-hmm. But as you know, um, of course. Um, I'm digital, right? But I still have a lot of physical formats. All my PS1 games, my Xbox One, my original Xbox games, some 360s, and a ton of movies and DVDs that I just haven't converted yet. So I have a lot, a ton of the, like, the zipper um, CD holders, you know what I'm talking about? Like, these thick binders Mm -hmm. uh, that hold CDs. And I got a bunch of them. I'm like, all right, cool. But I, I'm always trying to consolidate. And I found this thing on Amazon. Uh, you can also go to um, unikeep.com. U-N-I-K-E-E-P.com. Okay. It's a binder, but it's a much sturdier binder. Check this thing out. Oh, wow. That's really cool. So it, it's it's Well, it's, like a hard, a, it, it's a hard plastic binder. That, that's what's awesome. It's a hard plastic yeah. binder. As you can see how thin... I mean, this is going to be more for the video, so don't get me wrong. Right. You can see how thin it is, you right. know, compared to some of these other zipper binders. Yep. These hold 80 CDs. This thing is holding 80 CDs. Look how thin it is. That's really cool. And what, you know what? What I really like about it... I mean, granted, I have a lot of like... Like, I have two of those bigger binders for my DVDs. Mm-hmm. But what I like about that is it, it slips on the shelf like a hardcover book. Very much so. Yeah. Um, it's protected. And, I mean, the games just slip in, slip out. Very simple. Yep. I mean, nothing yeah, see, again. I wouldn't use it for video games because I have like my video game cases. No, so. no, no. Of course, but for and, DVDs that and actually my music CDs. I would love to get them for because I still have music CDs. Here's the thing: they're sold as stackable, probably because they're hardcover. I don't really see mm-hmm. anything linking them, but probably because it's it's hard and sturdy. But here's the real cool thing: now I ordered that off of Amazon, but right. I did go to the website unikeep.com just to see what they have. Right. They now for the listeners um, listening on the audio only podcast. It's got a PlayStation theme on this. All the the X, the O, the square, and the triangle. Yeah, I saw um, that, which is really cool. No, very cool. They have an Xbox theme. You know, not officially licensed, so, you know, it is what it is. Yeah. But a theme. When you go to the website, though, you can buy, like, a, they're all the same price, don't get me wrong. But you can buy a music binder that kind of has a music theme to it. Um, you can buy smaller binders. You can buy larger binders. Not just for CDs, though. I was looking through it yesterday. If you have like collections for like stadium Ga- tickets, Game Boy Advance, I'm looking at right that's now. That's what I was going to get into. Yeah. All right, so let's stick to the gaming then. They have these binders for Nintendo Switch games, loose. Wow. Which is, it's like a foam insert and you just put the games in. Yeah, I'm looking at this. These the D- are amazing. The 3DS one, the Game Boy Advance one, which I very might buy those. I'm seriously thinking about buying those. Damn it, you're going to make me spend money on this. Um, I have to buy at least two more of these 80 capacities because yeah. I, I still got a ton of like old, I got like old WWE DVDs. I really should get rid of all the pay-per-view ones though. Um, All the... I- all those DVDs and some, like I said, movies I can't convert to digital yet. Yep. Uh, television series that I haven't bought yet. Whoa. Um, what Ooh. Uh-oh, what'd you find? Trading card storage. Trading card. So your, your standard trading card, coins, stamps. Like I said, coasters. People who collect coasters. Um, if I, these things were around back when I was doing it, when like, again, concert tickets and stuff, I've 
Yep. I used to hold on to all of that stuff. Oh, yeah, no. Um, but just so you know, also like Magic the Gathering, like this is trading card, like Pokemon. They have a Pokemon. Oh, they're the themed. themed. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're all themed out. Real garbage pail kids. And they're, <laughs> yeah. and they're about $21, which I don't think is a bad price at all for something like this. No, no. Um, and you can buy extra inserts alone and stuff. So check it out. Again, Unikeep. If you, you, yeah, uh, I just want to say it, U N I K E E P dot com. Mm -hmm. I'm just curious if you bought extra inserts, how many could fit in one binder? You know, comfortably? you're right. That's what I'm trying to look That's at. So, the, like, because 80 might be the limit. Like, so, I can't imagine adding more to it. I'm I'm at the limit, right? I got 80. All right, I got 78 games in here, right. and if you look already at the spine, it's getting close. Yep. Ooh. So. That's interesting too. They have uh, for those of you outside of video games, uh, they have stamps, they have coins, mm -hmm. um, recipes, mo bunch of cool point, stuff. movie tickets, postcards. Like they really run the yeah. I don't know how you do a comic book binder. Uh, you just get the the like yeah. single inserts. No, no, no. I, got I know those just from magazines. Really, really interesting. Yes, Link, I know. Link agrees. Link agrees. He thinks Link this gave is his awesome. stamp of approval. He gives a stamp of approval over everything, as long as I give him attention. <laughs> so, uh, so right, check Brad? him out. You know, I'm not I, trust. I'm not doing an affiliate program with him. I just I got the piece. I love it. I think it's really cool. Mm -hmm. And um, they do key holders as well. So check them out. Yeah, very cool. Uh, it is a full capacity at eighty. I don't. You can't add any more. Okay, fair so enough. Just a heads I, up. I'd rather not. Even the ones I've bought the binders where I haven't added anything, and by the time I put, I fill it, it's mm -hmm. stretching. It's loose already. This one's holding up, so. Yep. No, no, no. I am, right, cool. yeah, very, very clever. And good, good, good call pointing yeah, that out. Yeah, finally. So, um, did you happen to purchase? I feel like I'm the one who's always spending my money. Do you not spend money? Like, I don't get it. Um, No, I mean, I spend money. I just don't spend money like you do. <laughs> what is that supposed to mean? You're a spendthrift? Fair enough. How's that? <laughs> I'm going to um, game on when we're done. <laughs> Yeah, see, exactly. Just my point. Uh, well, no, here's a look. Here's the thing with me and spending money. I have no problem spending my money. Trust me, I spend my money. Um, but I've been, well, first off, the last month or the last month and a half, a lot of my money went into the GameStop stock frenzy. So, oh, that's true. Yeah. So, which, by the way, I am now currently reaping benefits from. Oh, good for it, you. Because it's it's going up again and it's doing well. Okay. Um, how high it goes, totally a different story. Because it may just come crashing down tomorrow or Monday, and that'll be the end of it. It's like, what the hell is electronics boutique stock? Yeah, exactly. That's that's my next purchase. But um, no, no, no. Like my whole th my whole thing lately has been like I do an I do an ebb and flow with my shopping. Like for a while, I buy a whole bunch of stuff, and then I just kind of like. Like, and then I just like hit a dry spell. So like right now I'm just kind of in the middle of a dry spell where I'm not buying much, mm -hmm. but also in my brain, I'm not thinking about anything specific that I want to grab. And again, because I'm not, let's, let's face it because of the pandemic and everything like that, I'm not going out because that's mm -hmm. where I would, a lot of my shopping is more brick and mortar for retro games. I don't like to buy them online for the most part. I want to go to a store. I want to see what they have and I want to pick something up. Even physical copies. You'd uh, rather go right. I'm a physical. Okay, fair enough. You know, I'm a physical copy guy for no, the no, most no. part. No, yeah. I don't mean that. I mean, like, you'd rather go to the. You'd rather go to GameStop and pick up the game than order on Amazon. Well, no, 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 no. no. For like new stuff, I have no problem ordering it online. No, okay. that's it. When I'm talking retro stuff, I want. Oh, to I'm to sorry. Store. Okay, I got you. I got you. When okay. I'm retro shopping, I like to go to the store. Okay. So, um, so that, so that's always, and that's been my issue for the past year, where it's like I haven't set foot in a game store, so mm -hmm. I haven't really been buying that much retro um so i haven't yeah so that's really the reason why like you're spending a ton of money and i'm not you're you you know you're going to game on regularly i haven't really found a video game store out here yet mm. so um but that's not a GameStop, basically um <laughs> that's not on that's not being publicly shared <laughs> it, uh, essentially yeah essentially yes um thank you wall street bets um but i think um in terms of like so basically most of what i've been buying has been newer Newer stuff, um, nope. newer stuff through, yeah. Um, so newer stuff, or I'm like doing digital downloads. So, okay. um, like perfect example, PlayStation Plus, um, they had like four free games this month. If you had a PS5, uh, there were three free ones for oh. PS4 and a fourth one for PS5. Oh, yes, um, that's right. I remember that. Yeah. So I downloaded those. Oh, that's um, free. So I don't blame you. Well, they're free. I downloaded those. Those are free. And I played through the PS5 exclusive. Or the PS5, the one that was only for PS5, mm -hmm. which was called Maquette. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Um, and it was perfect timing because I, ju- I had just completed while I was in, while I was doing my contact trace quarantine for a week, <laughs> um, I blew through the last of us. Oh, did you? Uh, the first one first or the second one? one? The oh, first okay. one. I had never played the first one and I've okay. had it mm-hmm. for the longest time. So I'm like, you know what? I'll play through it. Excellent game. Absolutely okay. excellent. It was basically like playing through a, like a season of the walking dead. That's what it felt like to me. Okay. Um, so very, very good. And a good season of the walking dead, not the crappy season, <laughs> early seasons, not later, yeah, the, the early seasons, okay. not the garbage now. Um, so really, really good, uh, excellent game. And then I went and then usually after lately, I've noticed like after I play like one of those kinds of games, like the really like intense involved kind of games. And I had just done final fantasy seven. I finished final fantasy seven before that, which by the way, is one of the free games mm. for, Ma- for March. So if you haven't downloaded that gotta, yet, yeah, download I, it. I oh download my God. It. It's amazing. Wait, I have it. <laughs> yeah but uh, frank uh frankie actually oh. just played through it um our friend frankie played through it and he literally told me he's like i don't want to finish it because i don't want it to end i love it so Aww. much i said i told i told you that um told you you would love it um <laughs> i don't want to finish it i'm just gonna put it down exactly I'm, I'm well that's what it. i did well that's why it took me like essentially almost a year to get through it because i took my, i literally took my time to enjoy it we had to do the arbitrary frankie impersonation for the three people who get it who know who frankie is. <laughs> um love you frankie so so played so finished final fantasy 7 remake finished last of us and then i went on to maquette which is the ps5 okay. free game and it's a puzzle game i like i love puzzle games right mm-hmm. that's my thing but i also like them because most puzzle games they're very very calm they're very calming it's like the music is nice and soothing yep you kind of it's a free open space mm-hmm. that you kind of just wander around and i'm just like I need those games to kind of calm myself down because life is crazy. Um, I agree with you. I did that with um, I do I do that with Pacross. Any yes. version of Pacross, I'll just you know just get that music going, soothing, yeah, and just and you know they have the the Super Mario uh, Super Pacross on the Super NES on the Switch. Yes, the American version mm-hmm. that you can play. It's, I mean, it's in Japanese, but the game is playable anyway. I still I don't know if you've ever played it. I think you would get a kick out of those games. Actually, I started to play Pacross on the Switch because okay. the NES Online had it. Yeah, I yeah, think. that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I tried Pacross and I like it. It's yeah. cool. I love um, that uh, series. But I hear what you're talking about about the calming. So yeah, so so I played through Maquette, and Maquette is basically um, it's really interesting. The game is like again, it's first person, but you have a maquette of this neighborhood essentially, like these okay. four quadrants of a neighborhood. But then when you walk, like, so it's set up and you, you you look at it. And then when you walk outside of the maquette building, it's the larger versions of that neighborhood. So basically the maquette is just a representation of the neighborhood around you. Oh, I see. And the way that you solve the puzzles is through size. So like if you drop something in the maquette, like an item in the maquette, it appears in the neighborhood as a giant, as a large size. Oh, or if you drop it in yeah. the, the large neighborhood, it appears miniature in the oh, maquette. That's weird. So you got to figure out where to like how to place things yeah. and how, like what size they need to be in order to like access stuff. But essentially, the entire story in the it's a short game, so I'm mm. glad it was free. It's a short game, <laughs> but the entire the story is about a relationship, like a man and woman finding each other, falling in love, and then essentially how that how their relationship progresses. And that's the entire story of the game. So it was actually like a really like it doesn't take for doesn't take that long to beat. Took me like maybe three or four hours max. Mm -hmm. Oh, just a really yeah, just a really cool, beautiful little story. Uh, The the graphics are pretty and all that. So you know, it was a fun game. Um, and then on to purchases, which you were asking me. I just purchased a game. Um, and I think I think the sale just ended a couple days ago too. But I've been waiting for it to go on sale for a while. (laughs) Uh, it's a game called Rhyme, R-I-M-E. Oh, why do I feel like I'm, I'm familiar with that? Um, it's another puzzle game, but it's more of a third-person exploration. So it's about a little boy exploring this island. And obviously, he has to solve puzzles to access different parts of the island. And as he's accessing these parts of the island, oh, yeah, okay. you're getting story beats of you know what happened to this boy in his life. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's just a... It, again, it's like the music is beautiful. The, um, the you know what was funny? The graphics of it reminded me. It didn't remind me entirely of Wind Waker because it's more three D than Wind Waker, but mm-hmm. it felt a little bit like that. I'm um, looking at photos now. If if anyone searches for Rhyme, uh, yeah, no, it does have like right off the bat, it has a Wind Waker feel to it. 
Right. But just, um, you know, the open exploration part and then, discuss, you know, it's all about exploration, discovery and puzzle solving, um, but just a really like beautiful game. So I've been playing that for the last week okay. um, and I'm just loving every minute of it. So um, that that and literally I think that's the only game I've purchased in the last like couple of weeks. <laughs> Good for so, you. Yeah. All right. Cool. But there are yeah, games I, I keep having my eyes on. So. Oh, yeah. That. Yeah. Gotta, well. I'll tell you this much. Oh, go ahead. go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I was going to say one of the games that I've had that I have my eyes on is something we're about we're going to talk about on the show. So, oh yeah, in a little bit. I just want to mention this. It. What? what? You I'm have it. Do oh, I have it? do you, you? I'm sure you have it. I I'm pretty sure I got it for you. Uh, yes, you do. Okay, so I do have it. Never mind. <laughs> okay, good. All right. Um, I was going to say this. I tried very diligently, of course, to no avail, to get a PS5. So. I got the GameStop set up where they send me the notifications. Mm -hmm. Apparently, though, if I'm not anticipating the moment it goes on sale, uh, it automatically goes away. Yep. But um, And, of course, they're only selling them in bundles. Like, you can't just buy a PS5. It's got to be in a bundle, which I'm fine Correct. with. Yep. Um, but I sat there, and, you know, I'm trying to get the digital edition. And it would have come with, like, with a second controller, I think a year, uh, I would have paid for these, don't get me wrong, Right. Uh, a year of P PlayStation Plus and then like a $20 PlayStation gift card or something like that. That's not, the, that's not, a, that's not a bad thing. Not bad at all. Bundle not bad at all. At all. Yeah. Um, but it wasn't going. But the one that was available would have been the PlayStation 5 with the optical drive. It would have come with Spider-Man, mm -hmm. Call of Duty, and I think a second controller. And obviously it was more money. And I could have gotten that one. But I thought to myself, I'm like, am I settling? Because I really don't want the one with the optical drive. It's not like I'm hell-bent against it. It's just not the one I want. And, like, I'm not interested in Call of Duty, so that's kind of a waste of money. Because even if I try and sell it back, I'm not going to get the money that it's worth. Because it's not like the package you're saving money. They're just mm -hmm. packaging everything together. Um, obviously, Miles Morales, I would pick up and I would play. Of course. But I'm like... I don't want one of the games. I'm not interested in the optical drive, which is a hundred dollars more anyway. Right. So I'm like, you know what? I'm just gonna. I actually made a smart decision for the. I think, in my opinion, I held off on it. You know, these are gonna come back. They're gonna be available eventually. Yeah. You know what I mean? And for the most, no offense to you or anyone who has a PS5, right now it's just a jacked up PS4. Well, so. If, I'm just if saying, I, I'm not yeah. missing anything. No, no, no. If I can add to that, okay. I'm not gonna. I'm also not gonna lie and say like, there's not a lot out on the PS5 that I would tell anybody you need to run out and get it immediately, unless there's a game on there you're dying to play, mm -hmm. right? Like Miles Morales is beautiful. Like I loved playing through that game. You can play it through on the PS4. It's out on the PS4 if you really want to play it now. Granted, it'll it'll look better on the PS5, mm -hmm. but which I'm all for. I'm all for yeah. graphics like no, that. No, no. Yeah. So. And yeah. So I think, yeah, the PS5 will be a must own at a certain point for sure. But in terms of the games that are out specifically for it right now, I don't think anybody's missing out on anything mm -hmm. just yet. I mean, it's funny too, because like I laugh, my friend, my friend, Rich, um, I play on Thursday nights on the PS5 with Rich and his friend, Jack. And we've been doing that for like a couple months now mm -hmm. where we do Thursday night gaming and I'm using my PS5 to play Uno. <laughs> I did that with the PS1. <laughs> I mean, but like, but that, but but that's what I mean. I'm like, you know, it, like, game's addicting. The game is addicting. Oh no, 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 it totally is. Like we, 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 we just laugh the whole time we play it. It's really just along like, like we're kind of playing something simple while we're talking, while yeah. we're talking to each other of and course. laughing and whatever. Yeah. But um, but yeah, but it's just like you know. But then like we'll switch over to like Diablo three or something mm -hmm. like that, you know. But uh, but again. Uh, every literally everything I'm playing on the PS5, with the exception of Miles Morales and Maquette, I can play on the PS4. Yeah. So there's, I don't think there's a rush to grab it right now. Which, and again, I felt that. I felt yeah. like I'm good. Other, like, yeah, the the, for, the haptic feedback or whatever in the controller I hear is amazing, which I'd love to experience, and I'll get there. Yep. So, oh, I will say, like, the best game I've played so far with the haptic feedback was Astro's Playroom, which comes on the PS5. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's kind of a demo like they really, system yeah yeah exactly that's exactly it, it's a game it's a game that they give you for free again it's only like you can finish it in three or four hours mm -hmm. but um it really shows you how the haptic feedback works and awesome. it's fan it's fantastic like i can't wait for other games to come out with 
like that you know to come out mm-hmm. just to feel that haptic feedback awesome yeah. sounds good i'd like to apologize in advance apparently the i guess the gardeners are here so if you hear the uh the all the noise and everything outside i do apologize That's i'll okay. yell at them later well we're used to listening to the noise coming out of your mouth so i think we're okay. wow <laughs> and with that folks we will catch you everywhere um no let's get into it let's talk about it right now um you set three... yourself up for that i did no you're right that's hey, listen i'm here uh i'm the pitcher so i'm here to set you up at you knock it out of the park. That's the um, job. Three uh, big things, big newses, right? Um, newses. Going on. Big Why newses. Not? Why not? Newsies, right? Let's newsies. Start, yes. Let's talk about the birthday first. We got a big yes. birthday happening that, God, we're getting old. Yeah, I know. Well, you know, I can tell that. Every time I see you, you've got like all 50, right. more, 50 more grays. No, well, <laughs> all right. Now, now, now it's getting a little... <laughs> Damn. No, no, no. It's okay. Mine, mine are coming in over here. Yeah. Okay. Seventh grade. All started in seventh grade. So there we go. Yeah. What happened to you in seventh grade? I don't know. I have no idea. All I know which, is that's when this which, started. Which teacher did it? None of them. I loved all of them. Lies. Even the mean ones I loved. Because they made you love them. That's right, true. So, yeah. Anyway, as I drool my friggin' drink. Um, <laughs> Um, yeah, so no, no, no. I mean, we are we are dealing with um, again another special retro birthday, one that we both are very happy to talk about because we've both played through the game entirely. If I'm yes, right? yep. we've both completed this game. Not part of our contest, which we still haven't gone back to. Um, we're really, on. dude, we're pathetic. Um, so. <laughs> Let's stop promising things. Well, no, I, I just don't <laughs> understand what happened to our competitive spirit. Anyway. Mm. Um, so anyway, uh, it's the 25th anniversary, and you are correct. I do own this because you got it for me. <laughs> but it was funny. For a little while, I'm like, do I have this game? I'm not sure if I have this game. I go, didn't Larry buy it for me for like a birthday or something? But anyway, <laughs> so we are celebrating. We are in the midst of the 25th Oofa. 25th anniversary of Super Mario Brothers RPG or Super yes. Mario RPG. Legend of the Seven Stars. Super Mario RPG released yes. in Japan March 9th, 1996. Yep. We got our hands on it May 13th yes. of the same year. <laughs> and um, really probably one of the, if not the second after Mario Kart, of such a drastic change in a Mario series. Yeah. That I remember when they announced Super Mario RPG, I was like, uh-oh, I don't know if I'm going to enjoy this. And man, was I was I wrong? Yeah, I mean, it was one of those things where like none of us knew what to expect. Mm -hmm. So, um, so we were just kind of like, "All right, I mean, this is different. We'll see what happens." Because you know, back then, the RPGs that were coming out, you had your Final Fantasies, you had your Dragon Warrior, you had um, you know Chrono Trigger. Mm -hmm. You know, you had all of these other series that were geared towards RPG. Mario was never considered an RPG. You know in any way shape or form but then obviously they started to branch out the mario franchise you know to larry's point it went from super mario to super mario kart so they were trying different things so they went hey let's try an rpg game with it and boy did they hit a home run and you know it makes sense a home run because square developed it so you mm-hmm. know the company square that makes final fantasy exactly exactly and that's the game plays out like a final fantasy game which is why i don't know why I never really went to a Final Fantasy game then, because I enjoyed the gameplay of Super Mario RPG. The story is fun. Yeah. Maybe it's just because of the characters, but I don't know. Um, well, I was going to say, the char- I mean, the characters are iconic, and then the way that... Okay, so I think the Mario universe itself and the fact that it's very tongue-in-cheek. Oh, very um, much, yeah. You know, and, you know, and I think that that's what it is. It's like it's that world that you enjoy. So regardless of how they position the game. So in other words, you know, like I said, it's like Mario Kart, Mario Pacross, Mm -hmm. Mario 64, you know, Mario party. Like you're kind of buying into the characters in the world. And that's, I think that's why you lean towards Mario RPG. Final fantasy, when you get into it, it's get definitely the elements are more fantastical. You're talking, you know, you're talking, wizards and all these other kinds of things and Wizard. whatnot you're also talking about like the obviously what other games like final fantasy 7 like when they started switching it and gearing it towards humans oh yeah 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 you know and then it became like a little bit like more realistic so and mm-hmm. more serious in nature mm-hmm. so it just depends on your taste in terms of which worlds do you like to live in when you game mm-hmm. and that i honestly think that's why you just kind of stuck with rpg mario rpg 
Probably. Yeah. <laughs> um, funny enough, I did not realize this. Super Mario RPG was the last Mario game published for the Super Nintendo. Oh, wow. Did not I did yeah, not realize that. I don't know why I thought uh, Yoshi's Island was, but mm. obviously not. No, I guess not. But you know what? I mean, the, I mean, they, they went out swinging with that one because <laughs> I remember just playing through that. I'm like, God, I go, I've had so much fun with this game. And at that point, my RPG experience wasn't that involved. So yeah, um, this was no, yeah. I was just gonna say it's probably my second RPG. Yeah, I don't remember. I, it, I can't remember back far enough. This might have been my first because I played Chrono Trigger later. You see, I don't remember when i picked up like i still don't know how i got my hands on shining force but uh um, oh, right shining force i played before that I, sure. i'm sure i played shining force probably before this i i, I yeah. just can't remember um but ju- and this was also like one of the first games where you know like you get like mario and bowser teaming up for the first time yep um which is always kind of weird to see um you know taking them taking the mario group outside of the mushroom kingdom basically yep um uh and then uh what's his name uh who will never be seen again oh gino, gino. oh my god <laughs> why can't is there any reason <laughs> but also like, gino was like my favorite character in the game what do you think of the the graphics of it, it had like that you know like final fantasy well not actually no final fantasy kind of went 2d in its fighting style where super mario rpg had that kind of pseudo 3d isometric i guess they call it um yes like what do you think of the graphics on it at the time for super nintendo Uh, i thought they were just uh, like to me they were just so advanced looking you know Mm -hmm. what i mean anything that gave you that cheat of a 3d look you know and again like i mean just turning again doing that like that three quarter view just turning it so it looks like this like was Mm -hmm. enough to make it look 3d um i thought it was really cool um and then to your point it's like um uh, turning turning the mythology a little bit on its head by like all of a sudden Bowser is you know your ally and I'm like oh that's interesting you know introducing new characters again one we'll never see again although Malo I personally haven't seen in any other games either I don't remember Malo Malo was the cloud marshmallow oh yeah guy. that's right that's right yeah. that's right so that's I true. I think he showed up in something else but not as a playable character my to my understanding I think he did mm-hmm. but like to me Gino was like one of the best characters I've ever seen and I think there was like an easter egg of him in something probably probably like yeah. in a smash series No no like something. literally there's like a like a, a Gino doll oh, oh, oh okay. somewhere in another game because <laughs> I remember coming across and I said Oh wait! I go. There's Gino. I'm like, and that's li- literally the only time you've ever seen him again. Like they've never brought him out as a playable character. No idea why. Um, <laughs> but uh, um, yeah. I like to mention something real quick because uh, I'm sure there's a lot of people probably screaming uh, at the TV or their podcast. Yes, they are in the Mushroom Kingdom. What I meant by stepping out of the Mushroom Kingdom is just like that that difference in like gameplay. You see other parts of the Mushroom Kingdom. So, like it didn't really feel mm-hmm. like traditional. Mushroom Kingdom, I, I guess I should say. Um, so I just wanted to, to get on that before someone yells at me. Understood. Unfun gamer. Um, he loves to yell at you, and I love to hear it. <laughs> Every time. Uh, um, so, so, yeah, no, the game was fantastic. Definitely had a lasting series. Yep. Also, it spawned. It ended up becoming... Oh, I lost my page. Uh, it ended up becoming um, the first in a long series of Mario RPGs. Yes. with that, Yeah, because... Paper Mario, right? That came out after. Paper Mario, all those, I mean, that got about four or five games out of it. Um, mm-hmm. The Mario and Luigi series on the Game Boy Advance and DS. Yeah. 3D. Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga on the Game Boy Advance was phenomenal, in my opinion. Um, you can download it on the Wii U Virtual Console as well. Um, which, by the way, the Wii, side note, Wii U just got a firmware update. Oh, like last week should i turn my wii u on i guess i don't i i think it's just like stability stuff but mm. i can't imagine what else it is but i did get an update well i uh, mean considering i can play my wii on it i might as well just do that <laughs> um i highly recommend to download superstar saga on the wii u virtual console mm-hmm. very very good rpg game and again that even that led to one two three four five whoa f- uh, five uh, six kind of uh five or six mario and luigi rpgs Mm -hmm. uh, one of which takes place inside of bowser so well that's a weird one (laughs) definitely is and um yeah so i mean without super mario rpg we never would have seen those 
No, no, exactly. So a Super Mario RPG was a literal game changer um, yep. that Ant said led to Paper Mario, led to Mario and Luigi. And yeah, 25 years later, it's available on the Super NES Classic. It's available mm-hmm. on the uh, the Nintendo Switch console, yeah. um, the Super Nintendo Virtual Console. So if you haven't tried it, absolutely check yep. it out. Obviously, it's not a one, you know, you don't just sit down for one gameplay. No, but you definitely will, not. You will find yourself invested. Yep, and if we, Larry, if we have a couple of minutes, I did yeah. pull up some things you may never have known about. Oh, let's RPG. do it. So let's uh, flip through these really quickly. Sure. Um, first thing that uh, you may or may not know about this, right? So you can for the skip, PlayStation. Oh. Uh, it's no for <laughs> Super Mario RPG. Uh, you can skip the first boss. Really, Mac, Mac the mini sword. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Um, there's a glitch in the in the game where you can skip having the fight. So when you first enter the um, the throne room, basically, mm-hmm. you walk to the left side of where the shy guys are. Okay. Um, and when you can, you jump on their heads and walk across them. If you jump off onto the platform with Mac and talk to the chancellor, mm-hmm. you avoid you just avoid the cutscene altogether that starts the fight. That's interesting. Yeah. So. Huh. You can do that. Okay. The soundtrack of the game was composed by the uh, the man who created the soundtrack for Street Fighter Two. Ooh, and that his I name did not was uh, Shimomura. Okay, so that's cool. Um, he also did. Um, oh, she. I'm sorry. She mm-hmm. also did Yoko Shimomura. Um, she did the soundtrack for Street Fighter Two, and then later on did Legend of Mana Ooh. and. The Kingdom Hearts games. Oh, wow. That's big time. Yeah. I didn't realize so, that. I kind of want to go back now and listen to Super Mario RPG. Yeah. The, the soundtrack's really good. Yeah. Um, it was the most advanced 3D Mario at its release, mm-hmm. as we talked about. Um, it, and again, it was, it was uh, when the game was released, um, it was only three months before we got the Nintendo 64. Really? Yeah, that yeah. would be the last then that would be the last game uh Mario game on the uh, Yeah, Super and the, and right? that's and that's a large reason why a lot of people kind of wound up maybe missing it because mm-hmm. everybody was already looking forward to the Mario 64. I'm so mm-hmm. glad I picked it up for the Super Nintendo. Oh, absolutely. It, absolutely. You know, before I got my uh 64. Mm-hmm. Um originally it was not released in Europe. No, I I was just reading that actually yep. on the thing, yeah. Yeah, so, and the reason why is because Europe on their TVs, they have that PAL yep. screen, and PAL runs at 25 frame, frames per second, but in the US and Japan, everything runs at 30 frames per second, so they did, never adapted it to the PAL version. Not until, I think, 2008 when they finally got it on their virtual consoles. Correct. That's when they finally got it. Uh, there, there are mini games in Super Mario RPG, so for all we know, this could have opened up the doors to Mario Party. There hmm. are eleven. Is it eleven? There are over twelve mini games. Why over? Why would you say that in an article? Over twelve? Does it mean there were thirteen? <laughs> I know. It's, I mean, so it's just no. There's actually one hundred and seventy-four, but they're like, yeah, over twelve. <laughs> yeah, there are over twelve mini games in the in the um, thing, oh, including yeah. a Galagas type shooter called Beetle Mania, where you're mm-hmm. shooting shells. Why do I uh, feel like I remember that? Yep. So, and then there are a whole bunch of other games in there. Hmm. Um, and again, this is something we always talk about with this game. Um, it spawned popular characters we've never seen again, most notably <laughs> Gino and Make Malo. Yes, right. Malo. Malo and Gino. Like, I love, we, I always talk about Gino, but you I don't. never really talk about Malo, and neither of them have really been anywhere. <laughs> um, so, Gino has a cameo actually in a game you just mentioned Smash. No, Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga, where he hosts the mini game Star Stash Smash. Oh, you know what? Now that I think about it, I yep. mean, it's been forever since I played that game, but yep. yeah. And then to your point, um, Mas- Masahiro Sakurai, I-, I don't know if I said that right. He's the creator of Super Smash Brothers. He's mentioned wanting to add Gino in the game ever since Super Smash Brothers Brawl, <laughs> but he doesn't have the power to. That's entirely yeah. up to Nintendo to do that. Um, and then also... There was a, they did the crossover obviously with um, Cloud from Final Fantasy and Super Smash Brothers, but they never did Geno. And I wonder if the issue is partially because it's Square related. Like maybe Square uh, owns the rights to these guys too, like in some maybe, type of split. Maybe, yeah. Um, let's see, what else can I tell you? Um, you can get a super suit in the game if you do 100 super jumps in a row. Hmm. 
I don't and, think I've um, ever done that. Yep, I, I don't think I've ever done that either. Um, if you talk to in Monstro Town, if you talk to one of um, what is it here? Is a uh, what the you know the, the the things that drop down on you the the big monster chomp things not chomp but oh, thwomps thwomps um, you go into a, you go into a room there where basically uh, you talk to somebody they keep track of how many successive jumps you get with your super jump special attack <laughs> if you do a hundred of them you get a super suit huh all right I gotta check that out which is cool. Uh, if you do 30 jumps, you get an attack scarf. I think I remember that. But the super suit is one of the best armors for Mario in the game. Maybe I did get that. Um, on the journey through, um, and I didn't, I don't remember this. Maybe I didn't do this, but on the journey through Mario RPG, you can meet Link from Legend of Zelda and Samus from Metroid. I do not remember that. During different times throughout the game, and by the way, the article I'm reading from is from ScreenRant.com. They always put up these articles with like different stuff. So if you're interested in these, please check it out. During different times throughout the game, you can find Link from Legend of Zelda and Samus from Metroid sleeping in the Mushroom Kingdom. After you defeat Bowyer, go back to the Inn in Rose Town and spend the night. When you wake up, a sleeping Link will be in the bed next to you. I think I do remember that now. If you try to wake him up, you'll hear the signature sound when Link discovers a secret. <laughs> And then if you've acquired the fifth star piece from the sunken ship, you can go back to the Mushroom Kingdom and search the guest room in the palace. You'll find Samus wearing her armor to bed saying she's resting for up for Mother Brain. I don't think I remember Samus, but now yeah. I'm starting to think I remember Link. Mm-hmm. Huh. Interesting. Uh, let's see. Another bit here. Let's see. A, there is a... <laughs> I like this. Mario can be forced into indentured servitude at some <laughs> point in the game. All right. Uh, so at the Mar I remember this at the Mary Moore Inn, there's a honeymoon suite, right? Mm -hmm. And if you don't have enough funds to stay in the honeymoon suite, you can rent a regular room under the deluxe suite for an extra cost. You stay as many nights as you, you can stay as many nights as you want, but if you go downstairs and you don't have enough money for the tab, you actually have to work off the bill. <laughs> you work as a bellhop until you pay off your debt. I don't, that I don't, I do not remember that at all. Yeah. So I thought that was kind of fun. I'll to check that out. Um, let's see. Mario, let's see. I'll skip that one. Uh, F Zero and Star Fox cameos. A ton of cameos. Yeah, a lot of cameos. Uh, very easy to miss Easter egg Invi involves the cameo appearance of Captain Falcon and Samurai Gora's ships mm -hmm. from F Zero and Star Fox okay. in a private figurine collection. Hmm. Um, in the Lava Dragon Boss, uh, when you when you fight the Lava Dragon Boss, um. He's the one that you get the sixth star piece from, but then it gets stolen. When you go on to, when you basically, there's a point over there where you go into a room and sitting on top of these crates. Yeah. You have the F Zero. You have the F Zero ship. Yeah, I'm listening. And the, um, and Falcon. Are you sleeping yet? Um, <laughs> and, um, and Captain Falcon's um, ship from um, hmm. Star Fox. You know, what? again, I, I vaguely remember. Yeah. Uh, and then the last, the last one I'll just share is that okay. it is, and I guess this is an old article. It was available on the Wii and the Wii U Virtual Consoles. It's on yeah. the Switch now too, right? Yeah, it's part of the Super the NES Super collection. Yeah. yeah, so so if you are if you have Nintendo Switch Online, you can go play Super Mario RPG right now because it's Absolutely. in your collection. Absolutely. And so that is all I want to share on Super Mario RPG. Happy twenty fifth anniversary. Yeah, Good big twenty five. Can I, can everything's just stop getting old, please? Just let's just. Just stop. Now, if there's one thing we can't stop, it's time. Oh, is it? Time is but a door. I'll be back. Time is but a door. Wait, wait, wait. what is it? It's... Yeah, death exactly is but a no. Death is but a door. Time is but a window. Ooh, wow, nice. Pull. I shall return. Nice. We'll be back. Pull. Yes. Ghostbusters two. Vigo. Vigo. <laughs> Vigo. Why are my drippings with goo? Uh, <laughs> movie's fantastic um all right so speaking of movies uh and, and a wonderful other franchise as we um uh, as we wish super mario rpg a wonderful birthday uh yes. just dropping this week actually is a trailer for what i thought was gonna be a movie mm -hmm. ends up gonna be a video game either way take my money again yep they can have my money too so um from the makers of streets of rage 4 have you played that yet Street to Rage no. 4. Fantastic game. I know. I feel badly because I wanted to play it and I still haven't bought it. <laughs> From uh, Dotemu, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. D-O-T-E-M-U. Dotemu. We have 
Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge. Coming out on PC and consoles. No release date yet. Uh, Donimus, who did Streets of Rage 4 and Tribute Games. Um, studio that brought us Scott Pilgrim vs. The World. Mm-hmm. Oh, and uh, the T- TMNT Game Boy Advance Games. Yes. Or game. is coming out with this game, TMNT Shredder's Revenge, which it's not a direct... But you can almost say it is a not an homage, but it's done in the styling of Turtles in Time. Yes. Which I cannot wait for this game to come out. Oh, no, it looks amazing. And, you know, I love the fact that developers are going back to the most popular games in a franchise Mm -hmm. and creating a essentially like a sequel to it in in a sense. You know what I mean? Like like, um, because there's so much to farm from now. It's totally. essentially, you know, it's essentially like it's almost essentially like the movie industry doing a remake, except you don't have to do a remake of a video game. You can just do a sequel. Yeah, basically. Yeah. And um, it's got um, d- game design and and design of the turtles from the from the 80s cartoon, which is one of my favorite cartoons of all time. Yep. Oh, it's fantastic. If you watch the trailer, um, it's the original cartoon theme song, which is why I thought it was a movie at first. Yeah. I'm like, they're doing a movie in this style? I mean, put it in the theaters. I'll go. You know, vaccine or not, I'll head there. Mm-hmm. But um, it ended up being a video game. Uh, forgive me, I don't remember his name. But the singer from Fallout Boy uh, mm-hmm. is doing the, the rendition of, this, of the Turtles theme song. Um, from the website, the features of the game. Again, uh, designed from the 80s. Uh, pixel art graphics. Uh, old school gameplay with super fresh mechanics, uh, up to four players simultaneous. Mm-hmm. Uh, you could play with iconic TMNT characters and vehicles in yes. the game. New storyline. And I got to admit, at first, it felt like TMNT 2, the arcade game. And then it felt like TMNT 4, Turtles in Time. And then in a weird way, maybe just a, a mixing of the two. I don't know how mm-hmm. the hell you could do that. But no. but it, you, you, get, you get the nostalgia chills big time with this thing oh yeah no question about it so um yeah and and just watching the trailer before we you know Mm -hmm. recorded this episode i was like this is interesting i'm like they're doing a full full yeah obviously the full animated open but then just the gameplay and i'm like oh yeah no this is a no-brainer need to play this now (laughs) um i'll just read again quoting the website the story of this game with bebop and rocksteady assaulting channel six and stealing super gnarly devices to support Krang and Shredder's laden twisted plot. TMNT Shredder's Revenge sees the turtles battling across a righteous range of timeless TMNT locations. From Manhattan and Coney Island to the city rooftops and dank sewers, nice. help the fearsome foursome trounce foot soldiers, Triceraton warriors, and rock troops. I don't remember the rock troops. All the way to Dimension X. Works for me. I'm all in. Yes. You know, and since we're since we're talking about the turtles, I will say one video game franchise that managed to completely flip themselves on their head and make it insanely better. If you think about the original TMNT game on the mm-hmm. NES, say that again. TMNT. Okay. <laughs> the original game on the NES, mm-hmm. and then you think about the second one where they just oh. said we're taking the arcade game and putting it out. Yeah, I was like, that was just yeah. No, you're right. Brilliant. It was a brilliant move because day. that first game. I mean, I liked the first game, but it was a slog. Oh, yeah, totally. I hate that game. A lot of people hate that game. <laughs> so uh, we'll talk more as we get closer. Again, no release date set, but definitely for PCs and consoles. I haven't mentioned which ones. I'm assuming all of them. So um, we look forward to that. Yep. And uh, with the time remaining, I think it's time to talk about some... Uh, what, what we said this episode would be yeah, about? Basically, yeah, basically. So we finally get to it uh, at the end. Um, another... Video game documentary has come out, and right now we are going to mention, and we're going to just touch on episode one of Playing With Power, the Nintendo story that somehow people remembered Crackle was a thing and put it on their uh, platform. Mm-hmm. So, um, episode one, season one, episode one, Play Your Cards Right. And you want to give like a little synopsis of this episode and kind of your thoughts right off the bat? Yeah, essentially. So like the, the general synopsis of the first episode and Larry, just a precursor to that, Larry and I said we were going to review the entire series, but neither of us had time. So we got through the first They're episode. They're so long. They are. Yeah, They're episodes. really long episodes. Um, but 
um, the first episode focuses on Nintendo, the company, and its rise to the video game empire that it becomes. And, mm -hmm. and it essentially the first episode ends right at the point where the NES is about to be revealed. Just about, yeah. Yeah, so that's where they get to. So they do the rise of Nintendo from the 1880s, because that's when Nintendo was invented. 1889. Or, you know, became a business. 1889 until about 1984, mm -hmm. I think. I want to say mm -hmm. roughly 83, 84. Give or take, yeah. Yeah, give or take. So basically how they made it all the way through those years before they even went into the video game industry. Um, so... Um, you know, and they go through the, uh, I have my little notes here, so I'm going to pull out my notes. <laughs> okay. So, you know, they basically go through the, uh, Yamauchi family because mm -hmm. they are the ones that created Nintendo. Um, very interesting, like little interesting bits to learn where it's like the, um, I, I forgot his first name. Shoot. Um, the first Yamauchi. I'm not going to remember their name. Uh, I, yeah, but how he had to adopt a, a son in order to pass the business oh, on to, because he did yeah. Yeah, because that, that was just a culture thing there where it's like you needed, you need, you like, you always pass everything on to a boy. Mm -hmm. He didn't have a son, so he adopted a kid. He basically adopted an adult, actually, one of the workers. Yeah. Yeah. yeah he, he adopted somebody. Mm -hmm. They changed their name to Yamauchi so that he would be in the line of succession for the company. Mm -hmm. um, and essentially, like, and the game, and, you know, the, and again, for anybody who knows the history of Nintendo, you already know these things. Like, they were a playing card company first. Uh, and they created these cards called Hanafuda cards mm -hmm. um, because at the time gambling was a big issue. So they couldn't make like regular playing cards, Western playing cards. We Western know and love cards. today. Yeah. We're not allowed to be imported in Japan back then. Exactly. So they created these other cards, Hanafuda cards, which had different, like different um, seasons, uh, like see, yeah, the four yeah. seasons basically. And what, what made it as opposed to the four like, tops. Yeah, exactly. So um, like, Oh God um like cherry blossoms was one mm -hmm. of the cards mm -hmm. and stuff like that so and that's how and that's how they kept their business going um it wasn't until the uh it wasn't until like the i want to say like the 60s 1960s mm -hmm. when they um when they really started to branch out well in the 50s they made a deal with disney to do yeah disney that i theme. never knew or that i didn't remember know. yeah yeah that i didn't know like they made a deal I guess, with disney in the 50s. spoiler alert i guess if you haven't watched it yet Let's drop that real quick. Spoiler yeah. alert. Plus, also, this is a story as old as time. So, yeah. And and yeah, and we'll talk about like how yeah. we feel about the episode. But just to run through really yeah, yeah. quick things on it. Um, one thing I never knew, and I, or I, either I knew it and I forgot it, was what Nintendo means. Like it just. Oh yeah. Yeah. So like Nintendo, it's three different words that they put together mm -hmm. to make Nintendo. Nin means luck. Ten means heaven. Do means hall or place. So mm -hmm. the name means luck, heaven, place. Yep. I feel like I might have known that you're right. It's something I like think, you heard. I think I sometime. knew it, but yeah. it kind of fell out yeah. of my head. So anyway, getting back to the '50s, it's like that's when they tried to start branching out. They struck a deal with Disney. Uh, this is the third president, the third Yamauchi, mm -hmm. um, to be president of the company. Um, struck a deal with Disney to make Disney themed playing cards and did well. And then it was in the '60s when everything started to change for them. They entered the stock market. Yeah. They tried, and then they tried different things that just all failed. Yeah, that was weird. So, which I thought was weird. So we're talking yeah. about in the early '60s, Nintendo taxis, which is interesting. Nintendo Love Hotels, which is real interesting. Yep. Uh, Nintendo TV Network. I, that I did not know. I didn't know about that. Uh, and Nintendo Instant Rice. I did kind of know that one. I yeah. knew that one. I didn't know about the the, the TV, TV network, network, yeah. And the love hotels just sound fun. <laughs> um, <laughs> but then it was in 19, 1966 when they switched over to Nintendo Toy Company and yes. they started producing toys. Which so some can, of those toys look cool. Yeah, some of them really did look cool. Um, so again, um, you should check those out. Um, and then after the Odyssey came out, Magnavox Odyssey and video games and arcades started to come out, that's when Nintendo saw their future where it's like mm -hmm. this is where we need to go and then they basically go into the story of early nintendo with the, the 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 consoles and the arcades and how their arcade games were basically copies of popular games outright like, clones you know, yeah yeah they literally clone like um, space invaders and galaga and stuff like that it's like everything but pac-man they cloned basically everything yeah. but pac-man um and then they put out consoles they put out the tv game 6 the tv game 15 mm -hmm. um and then they and then they opened up um, they opened up their office in North America, originally in New York, but then moved to Seattle because it was closer to the Pacific Ocean, closer yeah. to Japan. 
Um, and then right when you, we were getting to the good stuff, right? When they were about to transition over, that was the end of the episode where they asked an artist who just so happened to not be busy at the moment named Shigeru Miyamoto to develop a game. And it was just off the cuff. And they said, you're not busy right now trying to develop a game. And that's where Donkey Kong came from. You're not busy drawing. Come up with a yep. game. Basically. So, because uh, he was basically just doing like the art, like the game yeah. art for like the arcade cabinets. Yep. Yep. And then they asked him to create a game, and the rest is history. Now, that's as far as the episode got. Mm -hmm. That was basically the gist of it. They put the mm -hmm. Universal lawsuit in there with Donkey Kong for a bit, for a yeah. brief moment, too. And then they have a bunch, they have a bunch of former Nintendo employees um, in there, some notable names like Nolan Bushnell, who was the founder of Atari. Um, and then, of course, some celebrities were in there as well. Like a couple of streamers were in there. Um, they had Will Wheaton in there. Boo! Um, Larry's favorite person in the world. I've met him. I'm allowed to say that. I don't care what you say. Well, Wheaton is awesome. Um, I think he works at Limited Run. He might. <laughs> um, <laughs> but anyway, so all in all, like, I mean, it was basically an introductory episode to get you to mm -hmm. where the real meat of the story is going to be, which is when Nintendo really hits its stride. So, yeah. And, and again and i'm not saying everyone knows the story don't get me wrong i i know it anthony knows it and a lot of our listeners we know that you've heard the story of nintendo you know about nintendo uh, like i've heard the story that talked about the one president that came in and fired all of his relatives yep um you know i knew about that um so for me so reaction wise now to the episode yes uh, the way it's presented first of all is awesome i love the little the the um uh what do you call them um, dioramas dioramas i love all of those those are really cool. Um, I love the interviews with the with the people who were there, the people, the insiders, the ones who yep. were doing it. Uh, all joking aside, except for Wheaton, I don't really need to hear from streamers or anything because I'm a gamer, so I know what it feels like. Yeah, I, I hope they do more with with company insiders and and developers as well. Yes. Um, but yeah, this first episode was just more, no pun intended, more of the same of stuff that I've already heard. Yes. Um, the potential is there, though. So I'll I'll tune in. I'll check out yeah. episode two. But uh, for now, it was just a lot of interesting. OK, knew this, knew that. Nothing yeah. really, I think, stuck out to me like, oh, I didn't realize that. Yeah, exactly. Like there were a couple of things where I'm like, OK, love hotels. That's weird. Um, but, you know, there were a couple of things that popped out that um, I didn't know. But to your point, for the most part, it was just kind of a kind of a quick history. Of most of the, mostly mm -hmm. general stuff everybody knew. Um, yeah. The other thing that I find that will always be lacking in these, and I don't know if any of the documentaries have done this. I'm trying to remember back to the the one we watched before oh, on high Netflix. School? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But but because this one is so Nintendo specific, I want to hear more from people in Japan, like Nintendo of Japan. Like we get a little bit of Shigeru in there, like like stock footage of Shigeru talking about stuff, but mm -hmm. I don't remember any. There were no real conversations yet of these people today. Well, a lot of them back. are dead, first of all. And... Well, I am, that part I get, but I'm. <laughs> and do you think? To... I'm not trying to be funny. I'm saying, like, do you think it's just a cultural thing where they just like that that generation, like Miyamoto, just doesn't. I don't really ever seen Miyamoto. Do too many interviews, too no, many interviews. I, no, I think more of what it is, is it's, um, I just think this is a westernized documentary that did not, I don't know, like, again, we're not at that point yet. I'm curious to see in episode two. Yeah, there might you, come another might be yeah. There might be some, so, but if you notice, like, they relied very heavily on everybody in this documentary were people who worked at Nintendo of America, mm -hmm. Nolan Bushnell from Atari, Tom Kalinske from Sega. So, to, I, be, to be fair... We are talking over 100 years ago. So you're right. Maybe right. these interviews are coming in the next few episodes. Right. So that's what I'm looking forward yeah. to. to see, I hear like, you, though. Who they interview in the future episodes. All but right. otherwise, like to me right now, like there was nothing monumental in this episode. Um, so I'm curious to see where they go with the next one. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, potential. Definitely. Um, for us, it's, like I said, a little repetitive, but we'll see what happens in the next episodes. And as we watch them, you know, we won't do as much yeah. of a deep dive into it like we do with yeah. High Score, but we'll mention them as we come along. Right. But the bottom line is, like, for anybody who's looking for a crash course in Nintendo's history and you want a quick hit, you know, just a quick hit of mm -hmm. what what how they came to be. The first episode is just a good. Yeah, it's a, it's a good episode to watch. It's about an hour and 15 minutes. 
Um, but it'll basically give you the origin of Nintendo, the company. Exactly. Uh, all right. And I think with that, we're pretty much good to go. Yeah, I'm done talking to you. Awesome. Well, I'm going to ask you to do just a little bit more talking and tell these people where they can find us. Absolutely. You guys can find us on Facebook.com slash Retro Gamers Podcast. You can find us on Instagram at Retro Gamers Podcast, Twitter at Retro Gamers Pod. You can listen to us wherever you listen to podcasts. We are absolutely everywhere. You can also watch our episodes on YouTube and IGTV. And if you feel so compelled to get in touch with us, you can message us on Facebook or email us at email at theretrogamers.com. Yes, that basically covered everything. Um, and have a good week. You have a good week as well. Enjoy your trip to Game On. Can't wait to see all the things that you buy. Neither can I. And folks, we will catch you everywhere next week on the Retro Gamers Podcast. Mm-hmm.